Good Friday to everybody. How's everyone doing? Welcome back to the old fashioned sports show. It's me, it's Alex, the combination that you never knew you needed, but here you are now hooked. We got you cooked. You're in. It's like we gave you a little sample and now you're coming back for more. Good morning to you, Alex. Good morning, Onward. They're they're coming in for all of the lastest information. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get the thumbnail fixed. We'll get the thumbnail fixed. I think Tyler was in a hurry this morning. I'm not sure. But spell check, spell check. I said to the thing last night. Actually, I said yeah. to the show idea last night. Yeah, he might have. He, he might have gotten to it after the. Uh, might have gotten to it after the basketball game. His his, 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 brain, his brain was probably scrambled a little bit scrambled after that. We'll talk about the basketball game today. You also had some stuff in the war room last night. Some updates about a few players, guys. Uh, guys, I wasn't really expecting to. Um, here updates on <laughs> we're going to talk about justice finkley uh of course the defensive end sort of where he fits in and what's going on with that guy and also peyton kirkland one of your sources was giving you some information about the redshirt freshman offensive tackle so we got a little bit of news yesterday from practice about those guys also a few ancillary notes that we'll discuss so a whole lot to get to but before we get into any of that just i i mean we got to do you want to say it? Do you do you have any takes about the basketball game? Or no, any takes? I, I'll be honest with you. I was doing some stuff with my son yesterday, so I okay. did not get a chance to watch the game. Okay, well then we're not going to have much content about the basketball team because <laughs> I don't, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know anything really about basketball. You know, never played it. Don't have any family that really coached it. I know that my daughter. Mm -hmm. Um, loves playing basketball, and uh -huh. we're, we're, and we're going to go watch the the women on Sunday. I guess if they uh -huh. knock on wood, if 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 they win, um, she's been to three or four of those this year. Mm -hmm. So I, I've I've enjoyed watching her as she plays with her you know nine year old, ten year old teammates. But um, yeah, I, I don't you know the basketball team to me looks like I was saying in Slack it looks like. Um, at first, they didn't even look that – like, look, this is complete – you don't come here to hear me talk about basketball, but I'll just say it. To me, I thought at the very beginning of that game, the mm -hmm. it, it was it, – it was Texas was much farther ahead. You know, the, the score was – what do they say about the score indicates? Or something? It, did, it didn't seem like Texas was winning by as much as the score would indicate, right? They were missing a ton of threes, all this stuff like that. I just I don't understand what the team's identity is really, but I don't know much about basketball. So, so you um, just never hooped. You never what got you just never hooped when you were younger. You just never just went out there and shot around or played pickup ball or nothing. Not really, man. Not at all. We didn't have a basketball hoop at my house and my like in my neighborhood. I don't really remember any. We we just all threw the football, man. Like, that's what that's what you did at Westlake. You you were on little shafts and you threw the football and stuff. I tried playing some, um, you know, I played some baseball. And when I got a little bit older. You know, I, I would do track and field and powerlifting and stuff, but you know, I just was, I'm I'm no good at basketball, so I have nothing to say about it. Uh, what's the what, what's the news from the football team, brother? Um, well, you know, there's there's a couple of things that that, that we had in the war room last night, and I, I got to figure out. You know, it's kind of it, we we can pick one or two topics. So we don't we want to give away the information, right? That that that, that people have. So we want to give we don't want to give it all away. But there were some things that I checked in with some sources. You know, obviously, uh, practice uh, was closed to the media yesterday, and and uh, unfortunately, hopefully, it opens back up to on a on a Tuesday. Um, where would you like to start? You want to talk Peyton Kirtland uh, a little bit there, uh, the red shirt freshman. You, I, I can start there. Um, those questions, obviously, you know, offensive line and, you know, he was one of these guys, but I think it was like a, he was a four star. I don't think definitely not a five star guy, In Florida, um, Florida guy. Of course. That's why you're always get. That's why you always keep your eye on this dude. You, you flew Florida boys. Stick I always keep an eye on my Florida guys. <laughs> I, remember, I, remember, I remember I was so, I remember when I connected with Cecil Cherry and I thought that was going to be something amazing for the, uh, one or two for practices. four days. What happened with, with Cecil Cherry in the floor? I mean, the Florida Five, we've kind of talked about that before. Um, yeah. But what Cherry was the, the only one that even stayed, right, was Devontae Davis, I think. Yeah, he was the only one of the Florida Five, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, the, it, uh, it, 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 went, it, it went from a Florida Five to a Florida One pretty quickly. And uh, the whole, hey, we need to go into Florida to get tougher guys to, to, to toughen up this program – that experiment lasted off for like a few months, but he's a, he's a guy Kirkland that comes in, you know, CJ Baxter, 
in, you know, from Florida as well, kind of in the same neighborhood. And um, one of the things I was kind of inquiring, you know, about him, because I, I, I saw him uh, this week uh, and I thought to myself, I was like, wow, he actually looks in better shape now uh, than he was before. Then I remember seeing him last year. And uh, so I kind of asked around, I was like, hey, you know, what's what's the deal with him? It looks like he's in better shape. And I was told like, yeah, because he had to be. Because basically, you know, from what I learned that that you know, the staff was kind of on their their last leg as relates to Kirtland and they're really trying to get his weight under control. Uh, and it's a listen, I've, I've never been a big guy, right? So I could never understand what the struggles are for big people in losing weight. Like I can't, I, I, that, I'm just the last person to, to have that conversation with. So, but can, can, can you not put on weight if you want to? Could you become fat if you wanted to right now? Never. Mm -mm. You couldn't. The mo I think the most I've ever weighed in life was 205. And that was because I was taking all those like muscle things. So like into my twenties, I started to get into like a lot of weight. I was taking all those protein stuff. So like the weight gainer things, you know, you're supposed to do a shake like once a day. I was doing them like twice a day to gain weight. And I, I, I went from, I started off at 147 as a grown ass man. And I got up to like 205. But then my, but, but then when I went to the, uh, the doctor, like my liver function was all messed up because I kept <laughs> taking too many of the protein things. They're like, man, you got to cut this stuff out. Like you're, you're in tremendous shape, but you got the liver of an 85 year old man. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, so I had to, I had to cut it down. I had to cut it. So I couldn't, I couldn't gain weight if I tried. I couldn't gain weight. So hey, I mean, some weight. people, some people, I mean, you remember that Tavondre sweat this last year, yeah. he, was, he was doing the interview with, um, Oh man, I forgot who it was, but there was a really good Tavondre Sweat interview. It might have been one of those deals with like Alex Okafor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Are these dudes? I, I don't know exactly. Oh what yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the podcast um, you're talking about. Uh huh. But, good stuff though. Yeah, but I, I think that was it. I'm, I could be wrong, but he was saying that for him, he's like, you don't understand how it is, you know, being a dude like me. If if you know, if I eat an extra like burger or something like that, or you know, I, if I let myself. You know, if I just sit around and just eat or something like that for, you know, three, four days without being active, I'll, I'll, I'll put on 10, 15 pounds, That's you know, crazy. and to him, I mean, 10, 15 pounds when you weigh 365, you know what I mean? It's like, it's it, as a proportion of your overall weight, it's, it isn't that much as it would be on a dude, you know, on like a 200 pound dude like me, you, do you know what I mean? But, yeah. um, you know it's still, crazy, it's still, it's crazy, crazy about yeah. that is like my, my biggest thing with a do the doctor, my biggest challenge for like a health thing has always been lack of iron and they always tell me I should eat more meat. And so they're like, man, you got to eat more meat, eat more red meat, things like that to, or take iron supplements. And I'm one of the few people that go to the doctor and they tell you probably need to eat a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. I'm, that, I'm that guy. So I, I can't tell a guy, you know, who, who struggles with weight, even though, but they said I need to cut out on the carbs. So I'm now I'm having to do burgers with, with no bread. It's really, it's really frustrating. I'm just, it's, it's a, Totally, totally different story. So <laughs> he's a uh, he's he's been struggling with the weight thing, Alex. And there's a you know speaking of the doctor, like you know there's there's you know there's there's uh, the strength and conditioning coach Tory Becton, and he's the guy that some when you see him, sometimes it's for the good reasons and sometimes it's for bad reasons. They've got they've got a group, uh, Alex, of of guys who where they struggle with the weight. Uh, you're basically in. We'll call it Beckton's doghouse. There's a specific word for that, but nonetheless, you remember how like Pat Moore used to have the pit? Mm -hmm. it's, that, it's that kind of equivalent. And Kirkland has found himself in there. Beckton uh, has a pit, huh? He has a pit, like yeah, like, like more. Yeah, they send, the, they send the problem guys over to a different area to do their workouts. Yeah. That those guys huh. are are running, and they have to run, run, run. So all the guys who sit here, Mitchell in that club. I'll, Mitchell's I'll, in there. I'll, I'll, I'll I think Savion is in that club. Uh, Kirkland's been in that club. Uh, and I feel like there was one other person uh, the, who was in there. But that that is the, oh, so you, you, you're you not going to lose the weight? Okay, we got you right here. So um, so they, they basically, they've been very frustrated with him as far as that's concerned. So that's one of the things that he's been working on throughout last year and the all season. Now, he did have a, 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 an injury that that kind of slowed him up a little bit. But I don't have his exact weight or what it was, but clearly it was too much for them, right? And so at least a functional weight and a healthy weight. So um, 
you know, they have them listed right now at 366, uh, Alex. Um, you know, they, they are a little happier with it. They still want them to lose a little bit more. And right, right now, I'm just talking about from a functionality and from a mobility standpoint for where he's at. Uh, I was told that he probably projects more as a guard than a tackle because he's just not fast enough to be on the ends. Huh. You got, it looks like we got um, Barry Sorrell's taking your uh, on the porch thing from yesterday to the next extreme. <laughs> 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 I didn't even catch it. We need more dogs. None of these meow, meow cats right on. Well, we need, nah, we need more dogs. I need, I, need, I need dogs. Stay on the porch. <laughs> on the porch. I need you to stay on your porch. I love it, man. I love that energy, baby. <laughs> the uh, Man, what I'll say about Kirkland, I mean, it makes it makes sense to me that they play him at guard. It, you know, I think as we kind of, as we look at that 2023 class of offensive line right so yeah. who we're talking about we're talking about that's the large humans class it's the yeah um, I'll, go look, I'll go get it for you gooseby peyton kirkland andre kojo connor stroh who am i not thinking of Jaden chapman right yeah. that's the five i think so if i'm wrong somebody will check me on that but i'm, I'm i think they, I mean, do we, are we counting like wasn't there like a long snapper in that group are we counting him so we I'm got not, we had we had I'm gooseby not, kojo stroh chapman Kirkland uh as the guys that's what you just said yeah yep. okay so we know so let's just go down them okay so we know what we know where Gooseby's at right now right yeah. um let's back up left tackle and looks looks really good to me I mean is he's been a, for as much buzz as a backup offensive lineman can have <laughs> right during 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 camp it feels yeah. like he's somebody who it isn't just, you know, it's not just like me that was out there, you know, the first day, one of my big takeaways was man, how, how good Gooseby looks. I mean, I don't, I don't consume other, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a member of any other Longhorn sites. I don't listen to any other podcasts or anything like that. I don't consume the content, but I, I can tell just on the orange bloods message boards that it feels like there are other people, right. That are kind of talking about Gooseby, right. He looks good. Mm -hmm. I think, Gooseby and Chapman, certainly we know that those guys are both going to um both both gonna play tackle. I think they're you know, now whether they stay at left tackle, whether they're always battling each other through the course of their careers, I'm not exactly sure. But we do know that last year both Trevor Gooseby and um Jaden Chapman lined up at the left tackle. Let's mm -hmm, see. Mm -hmm. Chapman played 22 snaps. Gooseby played nine snaps. Nobody else from that 2023 class even played last year. So it feels to me like Gooseby's so, sort of the top guy with that 2023 group. He's a tackle. Chapman has played the second most. He's a tackle. Um, we have Kojo, who right now is lining up with the second team at right tackle. So he's a tackle. We know that Connor Stroh, ever since he got to Texas, has only played guard. And now that's been in a spring camp and a fall camp. So he's a guard. I don't – I if we would have gone through this exercise, Anwar, uh, before you said anything about – um, before you said anything about him needing yeah. to be a guard, I just said he's probably going to have to play guard anyway. Yeah. Right? Because, they, like, we know three of those dudes are tackles. Right. Yeah, they're they're not going to want to have four tackles in that one group. That's that 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 isn't a good disposition for how to put a class together as far as the offensive line guys. So interesting. He's a you big. Know what's too, he's, Alex? A, he's a big guard. <laughs> he's a big guard. That's for sure. What's interesting? So here here well here, I tell you what's big. So Alex, I went and I went and looked on the 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 signing. You know the the orange buds plays of that twenty twenty three, Kirkland in high school was listed at 325 325 that's what we had him down at 325 he's list he's officially listed at 366 that's a 41 pound 41 pounds a uh, gain 41 pounds at the guy's game and that's what he's down to alex he's down to 366 so we can say that the dude in what over a year's time is game he probably easily 50 pounds or so i think that's that's 50 pounds, Alex. That, that's a lot. 
That's a lot in a year. I know we talked about weight gain. And again, I'm not big, 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 big man shaming or anything like that, but you can understand how a staff could be a little bit frustrated with a guy who comes in at one weight and you're looking at a year later and there's probably 50 pounds that's added to him, right? Well, you're not big man shaming about this. It's like, come on, what kind of world do we live in where we can't – like – you talk all the time about these NFL coaches. Like, if you're in the NFL and you come in out of shape or you you, know, you can't pass physicals and stuff, you, you're going to get fired. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like you're going to get fired. No defensive line coach, no head coach, no defensive coordinator is going to, you know, take on some kind of defensive tackle or, you know, some offensive lineman that is, you know, out of shape, can't, you know, has trouble passing a physical. It tells you all kinds of stuff about the kind of guy you're dealing with. And at that point in time, it's like, it's not just, it isn't just about the player. The man that you're like about, this is about my paycheck and my house. I got the mortgage on and my kids and the school. I want to keep them in. It's, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not taking these chances with this dude that can't get this stuff under control. And as the line becomes more blurred now with look, man, these, these, these guys are all making a bunch of money. Yeah. Like at the very, at the very least, I mean, at the very least Peyton Kirkland right now is making through that, what that pancake factory thing. It isn't he making at least 50 K. Yeah, I think it's folded into the Texas One Club, but yeah, they, if it's still hit disseminating, yes, it is. Uh, I was still- in my 30s before I made 50k. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so, uh, so like, uh, I, I mean, it's kind of like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I've probably lived, you know, 15 years of my life wherever somebody, you know, I wasn't living up to expectations or something like that, I, and I, you know, somebody would could easily fire me from my job. Yeah. And and I was making far less than he what he is. So I mean, like, you you can talk about it. It's the same thing that it's the same thing that the same thing that um Ketchum was saying. It's like now he says it's cool to talk about transfers and and, and stuff like this, right? Yeah. Like you can talk about it now because these guys are all the transfer portal is wide open. The NIL stuff's all there. You can, these are questions mm-hmm. you need to ask yourself. We're talking about ma- managing eighty five scholarships. So I mean, is but is the update on him just that? Is the update on them that they're happy with them, or is the update on them that they're this is just an ongoing work in progress? To see <laughs> where he's at or? Ongoing work in progress. Um, you know, o- ongoing work in progress of where he's at. Um, and you know, more than likely, this is a, a developmental year, you know, for him uh, as he kind of continues uh, going through. I think it's just one of those things. I just talked to a guy and just asked around, and I thought, hey, that's a kind of interesting note to pass along. And that's kind of where that that was. Uh, you know, the other one that was interesting was um, I got a Justice Finkley update as well. And don't, don't don't you think that I mean, don't you think that that's a that that's a that's a good tease before we just before we tell the big I mean, just I mean, that's a this is this is a beefy report, right? And it, and it, and it makes me think we can just come right back to the Justice <laughs> Finkley stuff after we talk about Texas beef traders, right? <laughs> Texas beef traders dot com. Have, have you tried Texas beef traders? Gosh, if you haven't, I don't know what to say. TexasBeefTraders.com. I'll be going there today, this afternoon. Guess what I'm going to do at Texas Beef Traders? I'm going to walk right in there. I'm going to shake my man Darren's hand. I'm going to say, Darren, grab grab me a beer, dude. I'm going to have a seat right here and watch the big screen TV and watch some college basketball. So if you guys want to come meet me there in Lakeway, come this afternoon. I'll be picking up some beef. I'll be hanging out with Darren. It's the best beef in all of central Texas, right there from MTX ranch, Mason, Texas hung for 13 days, uh, you know, aged absolutely perfectly grass fed, grass finished, no MRNA vaccines, no inoculations, no cockamamie steroids, all non GMO. You know, it comes from America. You know, it comes from Texas, Texas beef traders taste the difference in the beef. Do, Do you know what? Do something luxury for yourself. that costs $4. Okay, go into Texas Beef Traders right there at the heart of Lomans Crossing. Just grab a bag of their ground beef. If they're this crazy for me to be selling you this product by saying just grab the ground beef, but I'm telling you, you're gonna have like a you're gonna be able to make like a steakhouse burger. You're gonna have you're gonna have something that just doesn't taste like what you get at the grocery store. It's just it's a whole different world. It's a whole different thing. And once you just taste once you taste that burger, which you get a ten percent off by telling them that you heard about it, it here, right? That's like three dollars and and sixty cents. Go go do that. You, then you're gonna come back for some steaks. You're gonna be able to taste all this stuff. It's it's cheaper than H E B. And look, if you can't get into Lakeway, I get it. Texas Beef Traders, TexasBeefTraders.com. If you can't get into Lakeway, just call them, Darren and Shay. They'll just bring it to you. They're all over town all the time. TexasBeefTraders.com. 
<laughs> All right, fair enough. Let me find my main man here real quick, Eric Torres. Eric tells Holmes DFW. Go always say, man, we got a lot of people watching from the DFW area. It is springtime. It is time for you to get a house. Go ahead and get a get ahead of everybody. People else. are getting that itch. They're getting that itch. Spring is strong. Time. It's that Spring time. You got you, you get you thinking to yourself, all right, I got my taxes done. So you know what? Let me. Well, I haven't done my apologies. <laughs> I haven't but, done mine either. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get that done in August. But for yeah. everybody else, Eric sells homes DFW. Looking for a home in the DFW area? He's got you covered. He's El Presidente himself. He's a Longhorn fan, but he's got kids that go to TCU and Baylor and everywhere else across this straight. So he will not discriminate at all. Eric sells homes DFW. Go ahead and check out El Presidente. Who, by the way, uh, Alex. Uh, sent me a text message the other day. Said he really enjoys watching you, and he really enjoyed uh, your pra your practice one day one update. As well, oh, appreciate it, El Presidente. Maybe one day I'll be as rich as you. <laughs> None <laughs> of us will be that rich, Alex. <laughs> we can we can hope. I'm I'm not I'm not saying that I'm. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to say that outcome is impossible. Okay, I'm okay, that's fair. Maybe, but I can't put that in my mind, right? I can't. Okay, I can't I... in my mind. <laughs> All right. So the Justice Finkley thing was, uh, and it's interesting from the edge position. It was a small old note until someone said they they noticed that at, at practice he was faster than he was in previous years. It just they seemed to see a little bit more wiggle in him. Alex, where you have justice on kind of your depth chart. What's kind of been the 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 backstory on on him and what 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 do you what do you think? Barry Sorrell, feel free to Barry Sorrell, feel free to tap in here in the comment section because, <laughs> dude, I don't I don't I don't know what to make of it. I I don't know what to make of, of, of Baron or of um of uh of Barry Sorrell. I know just what to make out of Barry Sorrell. I I don't know what to make out of Justice Finkley, man, because. It's there's been this infusion of new players, right? There, I mean, <sighs> Colin Simmons, right? Trey Moore, those two guys alone coming in represent what is just a seismic shift and how these end guys or these edge dudes or whatever are going to be deployed, right? I just don't with. The first day of practice, we saw that it, I mean, Barry, Baron Sorrell went out there with the first group. And on the other side, like on the other side, that Buck side, it was still Ethan Burke. I'm wondering if, um, I'm wondering if Ethan Burke ends up moving around a little bit to where he plays in that same kind of role that Baron has been playing in. Um, I would say that the kind of the chalk answer, though, if he's be like, well, like, where does he fit in? I would say, it, I guess he's still Baron Sorrell's backup. Mm -hmm. But I, I mean, I'm interested. Like, I'd be very interested to hear from Barry if that's the case, or whether they're kind of moving some things around, or how that's gonna how that's gonna work. Because I mean, like like I said, coming into this period of spring practice, I I don't know what they're going to do, and unless they're just telling guys like Billy Walton, and they're telling guys like Jamon Tap, and they're telling guys like, um, uh you know, Tassilia Kana or these guys, they're basically telling them like, dude, we're, you, you guys need to transfer after spring's over. Right. Or if, if, if they're not telling them that, if they're just uh, giving them that impression by maybe making this a real jumbled thing where it's like, they're just as confused as I am about how this is going to work. That I, I don't understand how all, all these guys are going to play. I don't understand how justice Finkley plays. Give us, just, give it, help, help everybody though, Alex, because give it everybody maybe understanding from your depth, from your projected depth chart of what you've seen. Where, where do you see everybody on, on, on the kind of the pecking order, maybe even on both sides, so we can kind of see like where everybody kind of fits in uh, right now? Okay. Well, gosh, man, I wish I had my, my notes from practice or out in my car. Um, <laughs> That's all right. But, um, if, if 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 you want me to go get them, I will. I can tell you about the depth chart, like how I project. How the far depth away chart. is your car from the from the? Uh... I got to run. I got to run down the driveway just a little bit. But I mean, I I could be back in two minutes. All right, well, for, if you feel right. I, I, go go for it, Alex. Go. Well, I'll turn them off <laughs> in real time. Alex is gonna go 
go to his car and get his notes. Well, I'm kind of confused as to why his notes are in his car. It doesn't make any sense if you have a home office. But nonetheless, see, I think the thing is, as Alice goes and, and kind of goes and, and, and checks out these things, I would say this, and this is what I would say to you, and, and Barry, I think you would agree to this. It, the, a guy showing or a guy flashing, a guy, no, those things are good. Like those things are, are good to happen. Would overreact to everything in week one, right? Because you're going to hear positives. You're going to hear some that that you're going to hear those things. Like this is what this is like practice reports. These things are in real time. I don't think it always necessarily 100 percent equates into. All right, well now because of this, this means that. Like I don't think there's that A plus B equals C. Uh, I, there you go. I finally used algebra after all these years. They thank you for all the times that I thought my teachers wasted my time with math. Uh, there we go with it. But Alex is back. He does have his his, his notes with him. That didn't take as long as I thought it would, Alex. No, my car, my, my truck wasn't as far down the driveway as I thought I left it. Okay. Um, okay, so now I just have to find the – okay, so the edge guys – so look, I don't, I don't know what this means. I don't know what any of this means. I just know that um, this is uh, <laughs> when, once, once the edge guys broke up during um, special team stuff. It would put your notes in your phone, dude. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a true alpha male, dude. I write things down with a pen and I, I put pen to paper, right? <laughs> um, so whenever they broke up to. Um, with the edge group. Now I will say that this was also during special teams. So there was some guys missing from this, like Colton Vosick was down doing some special team stuff. Right. But here's how the two groups were lined up on, on either side. And it doesn't make any sense to me because these players don't feel like they profiled together very well as, as groups, but they had one with um, justice Finkley, Ethan Burke, Billy Walton and Colin Simmons. Okay who don't profile well together for me as, as well. And then one with, um, who is night? Who is 19? Is that a Zena? You want me to uh, yeah, Zena. Uh -huh. Okay. So one group was Baron Sorrell, uh, in, in that same group. And these aren't in any kind of order. Right. But in that same group was, and I'm sorry, did I say that it was Billy Walton with that first group? So yeah, it was Billy Walton with that first group. The second group was, Baron Sorrell, Zeno Umiazolo, or Yamuzolo, Trey Moore, J. Montap, Tausilia Kana. Hmm. And that just doesn't make any sense to me that Baron Sorrell would be in the same group with like Akana, right? It's just mm -hmm. that doesn't make sense. So I don't know whether they were just kind of just picking and choosing, like you guys get over here, you guys get over here, whatever. Um, but whenever they're we're, whenever they're only really giving us one look at team, one look at anything that's sort of like a team level kind of rep, right? One single rep of that, and then you have to kind of take from that. And in that one rep, what we saw was Baron Sorrell. In his same spot, Ethan Burke in his same spot, and then Vernon brought in the nose and Alfred Collins' defensive tackle. The linebackers were um, David Benda and Anthony Hill. The nickelback was Jade Barron. The two outside corners were Manny Muhammad and Terrence Brooks. And the two safeties were Derek Williams and Michael Taff. Right. And so from there, you can look at their individual drills and see how things are working out and just look for clues because, like, we're not there long enough to see, like, a, any team drills so far. But certainly, we won't all spring or all fall be there to see enough team drills to where we're, we, we see them long enough to see substitutions in group. Mm. Right. So it's just i don't i don't know where justice finkley fits i i think that important an important part of this spring football covering this spring in football is to say well we take these kind of reports to, it's like here's the th i i know one thing for sure anwar i'll bet you i'll bet that the peyton kirkland info was because you asked about Peyton Kirkland, because you love asking about your Florida guys. <laughs> that's, <right. laughs> that's that's my theory. But I guarantee yeah. you that this Justice Finkley bit from one of your sources was completely unsolicited because you did not go in asking about Justice Finkley. I can, I can guarantee you, but I was like, yes, to go in the, on whatever day it was. I wasn't like, man, I need to know about Justice Finkley. 
<laughs> no, yeah. it's a, I did that. Things have never been uttered out of my mouth. No disrespect to you, Justice, by the way. Yeah. So, so I mean, if we're hearing about him, that's just uh, that's uh, some information to file away, right? Yeah. Just. Yeah. Well, I mean, if we're hearing about him, we're hearing about him for a reason. That probably means he's getting reps, and it probably means he's playing. But could that? We know how this stuff goes, man. I mean, how many times have we seen this movie before, where? Luke Brockermeyer starts out the spring as the starting linebacker, or this. Yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It, like, I, it, it feel like it feel like Michael Taff probably is not. I, you know, we talked about the other day. He's probably not going to hold the job over Andrew Makuba for too long. But he's mm-hmm. you start out the spring. That's a that's a very good candidate to start the spring with the starters. You know what I mean? So is that? Is that the deal with like maybe it's like Finkley's getting a lot of run right now because he's technically still the number two behind Sorrell? Yeah, and, and that, I think he's right. He's so- getting run with the twos. He's getting run with the twos. I do know that. They, he, they, that's mostly like two. A lot of it is is impressing on the two. Now you got to impress in the twos before you can you know get the chance with the ones, right? But that portion of it, yeah, it's not so far not 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 a bad start. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that's. If he's being talked about, it's 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 good, man. The football junkie saying Finkley's not playing. Let's be real, guys. <laughs> that could be the case. Is this a green screen? No, man. This is this is this is a real this is real stuff. It's it's like Travis when it had water. Yeah, yeah. It's still I mean, it's still got water. It's just doesn't have, yeah, it's just like, it doesn't have much. It doesn't have much. <laughs> up, 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 dude, up by where you live, it, like if the farthest you ever get down is down to your down to your date nights at uh, Steiner Ranch. Uh, Steiner Ranch, there's no water down there. Steakhouse, you're gonna see the where where it looks just worst, right? It's down by where I live, there's there's some really really deep cuts of the lake, but it's still definitely low. I can't I can't put my boat in right now. Mm-hmm. I can't put my boat in. I need that lake to get up to six to like to put it in down the road here at my at my neighborhood launch. That's, that's just right down at the end of the hill. Mm-hmm. I need it up to like six 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 six. Sign sign of the devil is how I remember it. It, it needs oh, to be wow. six sixty six. To get it at to get it in where I have it um, at the marina that I have it in right now, it's got to be at six fifty. I think the level right now is like something like six thirty, six twenty nine. Like I need that thing to come up twenty something feet, twenty something feet before I can even put my boat in at one of the deepest at one of the deepest marinas on this side of the lake at Siesta Shores. So it's pretty low. It's admittedly real low, and it looks bad over there by Steiner, but. It doesn't look that bad all, 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 all over the whole lake. I mean, like, do, do the, real quick, like I've noticed, it seems like do people move their like dock of yeah. further up but yeah. just to try to get to the water? I've, I've seen some other places like I go, it goes way on back, and I've seen other places where people move the dock as far as they can, and it's just no water. It's just there's nothing there. It's the um, it's the uh, B- B- BT AK Pepperucci said Austin needs to stop growing. If the lake is going to fill back up, no, it's not. It doesn't, man. It's like my grandfather says, dude. It's like, or my grandfather always said, man. It's like living out in the hill country is a it's a cycle of droughts that are broken by floods, and it's going to flood again, just like it did in 2018, and that thing's going to come right back up. Um, but um, yeah, what they do with the docks, say like here in my neighborhood, I live on this. I don't want to say the exact creek that I live on because I do live right on the creek, but I I I live on this big this big arm of the lake, right? This is the creek that goes into the lake, right? And where we can put in, it's farther back on one of these one of these creek kind of arms of the lake, where yeah. the lake comes back and it makes a little makes a little turn and eventually it becomes a creek, right? Mm-hmm. And so where where we are, it's like you can put it like you can put your dock all the way out into the middle. There's no water, right? There's no water. Period. Now, if you're in one of the deeper, like in a deeper cove than maybe ours. Then yeah, that's what you do is you just keep kind of moving it. You keep moving it out, man. You get these big lines, these big metal lines, and there are these companies out here that do this for you. They'll they'll monitor it for you and kind of take care of it. Or if you're if if I had a doc, I'd be doing it myself. <laughs> I, I I I think it sounds fun, but yeah, you just gotta keep moving it out. The problem is when the flood comes, and the flood will come, and they'll open up Max Stark Dam or whatever it is right up there on Lake Marble Falls, and when and when that happens. Or when the Lano River floods, you got to get like you got to get your butt out there quick and get that thing as the rain's coming in. You're like, uh, you know, 
it was like Tom Hanks or something like that out in the rain on one of those boats or Lieutenant Dan, right? L- Lieutenant Dan and Forrest Gump with the rain and the storm coming around. Oh. You're, having to, you're having to bring in bring in this dock, dude, just all at once as the water is coming up right before your eyes. So oh. it's, a, it's an interesting situation to be in for sure. And one that knock on wood, I hope that dock owners all around the lake are going to have to be having pretty soon. Uh, yeah, because it's pretty, it's pretty bad. It's pretty desolate. So, uh, and how about what one more um, guy? I'll give you said I heard something it, again. This was a, kind of a random one, but I think it kind of trends in the right direction of things that you've heard too. Uh, Dre Bledsoe, um, that guy seems to be getting a lot of buzz so far. Uh, Alex and Camp, I think uh, unsolicited. We talked about things unsolicited, unsolicited. Steve Sarkeesian mentioned him. Uh, on Tuesday when he spoke to the media as far as he was talking about defensive linemen, right? He was talking about guys who got in a natural progression. And he talked about, like, I feel good about Alfred Collins. And he said, I feel good, um, you know, about Vernon Broughton. But he also told, said they feel, feels really good about Dre Bledsoe. I've been hearing a lot of great things about him uh, in the offseason workouts. I've been hearing good things about him so far uh, in spring. Sarkeesian also mentioned Alex January as a guy who has made some progression as well. But Dre Bledsoe is a guy I heard this week. Um, so let me use that as a setup. In a basketball term, that would be a point guard, kind of giving you a dish there. Uh, so for my assist, uh, what can you tell everybody about Dre Bledsoe? What's the 411 and scoop on him? I'll tell you about him in just one second. I just got a text from one of my buddies. Listen to this. Have, have you heard about Bijan? No, it's 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 good, right? Of course, it's okay. Bijan, so it's so it's 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 good news. Falcons Bijan Robinson has perfect March Madness bracket through the first day. Wow, he, he he's he went he went sixteen and zero on 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 day one. Just uh just wow. zero 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 point three eight percent of Damn. perfect brackets remain through a wild slate <laughs> through a wild slate of upsets. So he picked dude. So that means he picked okay. So he picked Oakland to beat Kentucky. Wow. <laughs> Bijan, 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 B, this is the year of Bijan. First of all, he's got my guy Raheem Morris as his coach. So he, you you actually have a guy that actually knows how to utilize him. He's got a quarterback. I mean, like, I think the, the stars are lining for Bijan. Knock on wood. No, oh, man. Thursday. Gosh, I love Bijan Robinson. He's it's really just, good guy. Uh, okay. Yeah. It, it looks like he looks like you can go on. Um, so you can go to the just the one time I'll ever recommend seeking out the NCAA on social media or for, or for any, anything really, you can go to NCAA March at March madness. And you can look at the tweet and you can see who all he's, who all he has picked. He, Oh, somebody's saying Benji. He says he has UT winning it all. Cody's saying he has Western Kentucky today. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. So it, 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 you know, well, we'll, we'll, Hey, enjoy it while it lasts. Hey, yep. that's all. Uh, yeah, those. Yeah, I mean, those, those 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 brackets are definitely meant to be busted. Um, By the way, one of these one of these websites here said uh, Bijan Robinson is a part of a point zero 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 thirty three eight percent of people with a perfect bracket after day one. Yeah, yeah, less than one percent. Hey, before I talk about Bledsoe, can I just ask you one thing? Have you heard any of this stuff about o- Otani? Is he going to be in big trouble for gambling or something? No, have, I haven't have heard, you heard much anything about it. About it? No, okay. what's maybe somebody in the chat can let us know. Like, is that fake stuff, or is that like really some something that could be swindling o- Otani? I'm, I'm, I'd be very interested to hear what people think. Um, anyway, so uh, we have um, where is he? How, how, how much did he play last year? So Jerry Bledsoe played 80 snaps last season. Uh, we do know that Tavondre Sweat, another guy, completely unsolicited when asked about who's next up at Texas mentioned Jerry Bledsoe, right? Mm-hmm. Talked about him. Um, he played 20% of snaps versus Rice. He got into the uh, Alabama game for 9.3% of snaps, did not play versus Wyoming, played 30% versus Baylor, 21% versus Kansas, uh, 5% of snaps versus Oklahoma, 5% of snaps versus U of H, 17% of snaps versus BYU, was hurt in the Kansas State game because he got off to a good start in that game, but only played three snaps. And then he missed TCU. He missed Iowa State. He played 14% of snaps versus um, versus uh, Texas Tech. So if we just look over the course of the games he actually played, what, three, two games over 20%, both of the blowout games, right? Kansas, Baylor, 
in closed games, he was getting between, uh, you know, I mean, he got 19.61 versus Rice. I don't know if we consider that one, you know, that's not one the close game. In the closer games, he's looking at like a 5 to 10% snap guy, mm-hmm. almost 10% of snaps versus Alabama. So if we were just to plug that in, let's say a snap percentage for these other games, You'd be looking at more like instead of like a he played ten point three two percent of total snaps last year. Now you'd be looking at something like a fourteen uh, percent snap participant last season, fourteen fifteen percent snap participant, and that would have gotten him up to you know somewhere along the lines of like say. Now uh, that's still he's not still moving up very much. The next lowest defensive lineman after him was Trill Carter at twenty six percent of snaps. So. Uh, look with Bledsoe, I, I've always, I've always thought that he's, you know, whenever he's been out there, we've, we've seen him flash, right? Um, he was more productive last year than Alfred Collins on a smaller, smaller sample size, but he generated production once every 10.67 snaps versus Alfred Collins at once every 11 point, um, 11 point oh nine snaps. This is something interesting that I hadn't considered before. Listen to this 80 total snaps. But on 80 snaps, he got three pressures mm-hmm. from, an, from an interior defensive line spot. That's pretty good. That's what, a pre- pressure every you know, 20, 26.666 snaps? Was, is that right? I mean, what it, what it, what, no, what, 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 27.66? I don't know, something like that. 20. Before you go full dirt on that, what does that get in full, when you said, talking about the press? What's a good number? Every, what's a one pressure per whatever snaps? What's a good number? Well, I mean, just uh, that's a good question. I could just look it up. Let me just make a copy of this thing real quick. And just because he he didn't have any quarterback hits or any quarterback. Um, so let's see, insert a column here. And so we'll say, I'm going to insert a column here. So let's say sacks plus hits plus pressures. Let's see what that is, right? How many? It's a good idea. So insert column right. We'll say some of these three sacks. It's pressures. We'll make that a new line here. And then we'll take it. And in this one, we'll say equals divide. You get to, if you want to talk about something else for like two seconds, I'll get this formula put in. And then we'll. Yeah, well, while you do that, I, I, I was going through, I, I, I got a, I got a poor guy. This, I got, I got a, a message from a kid. Um, it looks like, a, you know, on, on X. And he's first, he calls me Coach Richardson. He misspells my name, unfortunately, um, which is not a good thing. Uh, and then he told me he, how he's a three-star defensive tackle and offensive line uh, guy, physical football player. Wanted to know if there's any interest. Uh, love to, you know, hear from me. Uh, he also lets me know that he wants to come and play football for me. And thanks for the time. And which I totally, it's, I, I feel really bad for this kid because I don't know how to tell him that. Um, I'm not a coach. But, I'm yeah. not a coach. Um, and you probably have reached out to the wrong person. All right. So here's what the 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 Anwar the Anwar metric snaps per. Yes. Like pressure act, right? A, a quarterback hit, a quarterback sack, or a quarterback pressure, right? A quarterback hit is just a pressure where you where you, where you hit the quarterback and knock him down, but you don't sack him, right? Okay. And this thing doesn't count sacks whenever – this thing does not count sacks whenever all you do is you force a quarterback out of bounds behind the line of scrimmage and, and don't touch him. Okay. And, it, and, it all, and it also doesn't count a sack if the quarterback falls down on his own and all you do is you're the first one to go touch him. Okay, <laughs> Michael Strahan would would yeah. beg to differ to, with you on that one, my okay. friend. Okay, so here's how it goes from last year: of guys that played at least 80 snaps, like Jerry Jerry Bledsoe, the guys who were in front of him, um, Byron Murphy once every 12.98 snaps. Gosh, uh, Ethan Burke 338 339 total snaps got a sack, a hit, or a pressure once every 18.83 snaps. Mm-hmm. Baron Sorrell was next up, 475 snaps, got a quarterback sack, a quarterback hit, and or quarterback pressure once every 19.79 snaps, third on the team. Fourth on the team was Devondre Sweat on 415 snaps. He's sitting at 20.24. Anthony Hill was next with 429 total snaps, sitting at 20.43. Next was Alfred Collins on 305 snaps. 
He got there once every 21.79. Justice Finkley was ahead of Jerry Bledsoe. 226 total snaps, got there once every 22.6. Bledsoe is here once ever is next up. So number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on last year's team, once every 26.67 snaps. To give you an idea, idea of the guys who were behind him, Jet Bush was there once every 28.13. Maurice Blackwell was there once every 31.2. Vernon Broughton was back there once every 35.1. And then just a giant fall to this next level of the dudes like now Trill Carter was there once every 100.5. Wow. Um, Not existed. Yeah. Um, trying to find any other. There really weren't any other. Def, there were def, defensive linemen on the team that just never got a never got anything, but all those guys played under 46 snaps. Okay. Aaron Bryant had the most snaps of anybody who didn't generate any production last season as far as sacks, hits, or pressure. He didn't generate any production, period. He and how many like, and, and how many uh snaps did he play? 46. And yeah. so that's that's the deal where um but all all these guys who didn't get any any production in this metric are all 46 is the most of any of them. Lee Ungalafau didn't either. He played 43 snaps, but everybody else is like three, two, one, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. So um that's kind of how it shakes out. So I said that I said that um Bledsoe was good for that 26.67. And it does seem pretty good because once you get to Vernon Broughton at 35.13, the next player on there is a 61. So there's a big drop off right there at 35. He's in that same category as Justice Finkley, Alfred Collins, and yeah, it's been Alfred Collins, Justice Finkley, and uh, Jerry Bledsoe are very, very similar profiles when you consider efficiency per snap with either getting a quarterback hit, a quarterback sack, or, or quarterback pressure. That's the way that we, that we can think of what he's put on the field from last season over, over 80 total snaps. Nice. All right. So now we know what the what they're, they're, they're striving for and what they have to admit. So th those are kind of Alice. That's kind of some of the notes that we get. There, there's more information that we have in the war room. That's just a little bit of a teaser there. Uh, the uh, information that, that Alice just gave you, by the way, that stuff that he puts out there on orangebloods.com. That's not that. That's not him quoting PFF or anybody <laughs> else. No. You know, cockamamie, cockamamie <laughs> as it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know. But wait, Alice, you, uh, you got to always remember, like, sometimes people watching this show for the first time and they, they, they don't know these things. And they may be thinking like, well, he's just reading off something from somebody else's website. That's why it's always a good time to sign up for orangebloods.com. So you go from average fan to insider. That's what an insider did. That, all that thing that he just gave you, all those stats, statistics, everything, that's the inside information that you get on orangebloods.com. It's not just... Oh, those guys just report a couple of things. Ah, there's more to that. So orangebuzz.com, make sure you guys sign up for it uh, because obviously uh, it's the place to be for things like that. Uh, Alice, uh, before we get out of here, I wanted to show you one thing uh, that I think everybody else would get kind of a kick out of this one. Apparently Patrick Mahomes lost a bet to Shane Bouchelle. And had, oh, I saw this. Yeah, it's good. And had to put on the the <laughs> the the mascot head. Yeah. I've had to put on Bevo for it right there. Alex, our long on our board made a really, I thought one of the best um, observations that I think as relates to. I um, didn't. I, I I didn't read it, but can I tell you my observation, and we can see if it's the same as our longs. Yes. How do we know that that's really Patrick Mahomes? Well, I think he posted it. Yeah, but it doesn't. But what if he didn't? What if he's got one of his friends or you got his brother to put it on, just so he didn't have to do it? I mean, I don't know. I think he seems That's to be my a pretty. First thought. Well, I think I, I think he see here here here's the deal, I, and then this is what R Long sixty eight said, and this is where I I feel like Patrick is a stand up guy, and this is what he said. He goes, he'd be so much more easy to like if he divorced his family. <laughs> <laughs> and i think isn't that like the, the ultimate with patrick you're like man this guy's action seems like a really cool dude like i, I he seems like it was he's cool and then it's just his family that's the people who just f it up for him all the time but outside of that i you think you that's a guy that he's all branches of the family too man he's, he's always having to answer a question about his brother or his dad or his wife and she's doing the she's doing the swimsuit magazine and just everything else <laughs> 
Yeah, <laughs> man, it's, it's tough. It's tough, dude. It's a <laughs> tough. You choose your friend. I can't. I can't say I feel. I can't say I feel too too bad for him, man. Not only is he making all the money from the uh, from the football stuff, but I mean, he's just, what the ambassador for like Hunt's ketchup and all this stuff like that. He's just golly, that guy's making all the money in the world. He is, Mr. Lee, Lee, Lee Steinberg got a good one in that guy. Yeah, yeah, nonetheless. Well, listen, man, that's it. That's it for me uh, today. Uh, it's weekend time, so I want you guys to go. Make sure, first of all, I ain't gonna steal Alice's thunder, but go out to Texas Beef Traders and go ahead and check them out. It's 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 weekend time. It's time to grill. So you got got basketball going all this. weekend long. Yeah. So, I mean, why not go out, get some good food out there and, and grill out and have a fantastic time? Uh, enjoy it for those who uh, are going to enjoy Palm Sunday. Enjoy that and enjoy your, your weekend. If not, uh, go out and enjoy basketball. We'll see what happens with the basketball team themselves. And I, I know I'll be back here uh, on, on Monday. Uh, and we'll see what happens over the weekend. So uh, just for myself and not for Alice, because Alice will close it out. Uh, you guys enjoy yourself. Remember what I always say, live each day like it's your last, because one day it will be. Yes, Alex. sir. Uh, happy Palm Sunday to you, Anwar. Happy Palm Sunday to everybody out there who who uh, celebrates it, man. Um, it's going to be an awesome weekend around here. I know that my weekend is going to be great. I, I hope that your weekend is going to be great. And the person who can make it great and who can make it fun is you. So go ahead and do it, man. Go do something great. Go do something big. For Texas Beef Traders, for Eric's Sells Homes, DFW, for Anwar, I'm Alex. We'll see you guys on Monday.